Zombie versus uh, your rear. Amazing fight. One of the, one of the uh, more entertaining fights, particularly in spots of recent memory. And definitely, you know, this fantastic finish. Uh, I couldn't see what happened. You know, I, I was the same as the announcers. I just couldn't see what happened. And Paul Felder was saying that he goes, man, I think it was a head, but I agree with him. You could not see it until you saw it on replay from a different angle. And I've never seen this technique before. And, you know, the mere fact that Yorir Rodriguez had the mental capacity to throw that technique at that point that he was in. Don't forget, two seconds later, literally two seconds later, he was on the ground, exhausted and could not stand up. His opponent was on the ground, unconscious. You have to take that into account to fully appreciate what those two fighters did. They deserve credit to a higher level. But to look at that technique, which I've never seen before, I've never been taught that, I've never seen that in the gym, and I've never seen that in a competition. To be bent over, to have an opponent on top of you, to be able to look back, and if you watch the video, Yarir does look back. He doesn't throw this blindly. He turns his head just a little bit, just enough to see a zombie out of the corner of his eye, wham, and he throws, uh, throws his upward elbow. He does that in the middle of absolute exhaustion, exemplified by the fact that moments later, he was laying on the ground, even in victory, exhausted and couldn't get up. You know, they ask him, Paul Felder asks him, how do you feel? Very first question he asks him, he says, I feel terrible. And I am not quoting because I can't say what he said, right? But that's, that's how he felt. And so for him to have that presence, for, for him to have that awareness of mind, uh, and to be able to throw a technique like that, I thought was really impressive. And that wasn't the only one that Yarir did. You know, I was watching that contest. Sure, he was exhausted and sure he was hurt. They both were. They were pushing through it like they weren't. They were actors. They were pretending. They were pretending they weren't. They were letting their body language, letting their body convince their mind. So many people will tell you it's, it's all mental and it's the mind. Man, that's a really nice thing to sell books, okay? A lot of times it's the other way around. A lot of times your mind checks out. You're exhausted and your mind as an intelligent person is well enough to be aware of that and recognize it. And your body has to take over. Yarir and Zombie's bodies were taking over and convincing their minds. Okay, It wasn't the other way around like people like to say so that they can make money on their DVDs and their promotional videos. Their bodies were controlling things. So first off, that big finish, never seen it before. Yarir, thank you, taught us all something, right? But there was another move in there. I don't know if you guys saw this. Yarir was up against the fence, okay? Picture this if you guys saw this, uh, this fight. Yarir's back was up against the fence. There's space created. Zombie comes at him with a flying knee. Did you guys see this? Yarir, to defend the flying knee, jumped into the air. This was a piece of brilliance that I feel went overlooked in this fight. I have never in my life, I thought I've seen everything in MMA. And some guys do it better than other guys, and some guys can do it more often, but I felt as though I'd seen everything. At some point, I've seen, somewhere along the way I've seen it, I've never seen this. For a flying knee, if you guys don't understand this technique, imagine you're standing okay, on your feet, and I come at you and I jump in the air to throw a knee into your face. Imagine I do that. How are you going to defend it? How are you going to stop it? A lot of guys duck into it. A lot of guys try to grab a double. A lot of guys just absorb the shot but hope to throw one of their own, usually a takedown or something like that. Your rear jumped into the air, okay? So the knee that's coming for his face, his face is now 12 inches up. It was brilliant, and I don't. I felt like he didn't get credit for it. I, I'm more impressed with this as a fighter, but even if you're not a fighter, if you're a fight fan, just consider this, and I, I think you'll appreciate this more with me. Imagine you're standing on your feet, okay? And a guy comes running at you, jumps into the air with a goal to knee you into the face. Your rear jumped. He jumped, he used gravity, he left the ground, he jumped into the air. Well, all of a sudden, his face, that zombie is perfectly timed, that he has seen, he's done all the calculations. It's now 12 inches towards the ceiling. It's not even there anymore. So the knee goes like it, you know, hits him in the butt. He doesn't care where the knee hit him as long as it didn't hit him in the chin. I've never seen that before. So the fact that when I learned something, thank you, your rear. Oh, truly, oh, you a thank you. But secondly, for your rear to be able to do that in the frame of mind that he was in, in the state that he was in. I just thought it was really impressive. And, and the story goes both ways. 
And one of the reasons I'm putting more of an emphasis on your rear uh, is because he was losing. I thought that Zombie, and it's not just opinion of what I thought, the judges had turned their, their cards in and the fight was going to go to Zombie. And while it was a fantastic fight and it was super close and I'd have no problem with the decision, that was going to, that's official. So this isn't, this isn't any longer up for debate of who was winning the fight. The judges had turned their cars in, and, and it was Zombie, which is why I think that Yarir does deserve that extra bit of credit, uh, you know, for being able to go through that and, and go do it. I think there's also a conversation to be had. And I don't think this is one that you guys want to have. I feel like I'm a little bit on my own here, but there is something to be said about this five-round business, okay? Those guys did their job, and those guys proved their point. They did it in a lot less in the 25 minutes and when you look at the condition that they were in and we will only know in the days to come when their next fights are going to be we're going to see a rematch with those two or we're going to see them with somebody else the relevance is only one thing how long of a break do these guys need because of the fight that they were just in and would they need as long of a break had it not been a five-round contest i think that that's really relevant I think that we're, we're enjoying some of these fights and we're putting these guys in a little bit of a tough situation. I know the last five-round fight, I'm going to count this one as a five-round fight. I think you guys will give me some slack on that, right? I'm one second off, but I think you'll give me some slack there. The last one that we saw that went to the duration being Whitaker and uh, Yoel Romero. Neither of those guys has fought again. Neither of those guys has fought again because the fight was so grueling and so hard and so long. I think we're gonna see the same thing with Zombie and Yurir. I think they're both gonna be out a little bit. I think there's a bigger conversation to be had of is there something we can do with that 25 minute, that five, five minute round situation. Still give ourselves the entertainment, still have the athletes put it on the line. That's the sport we're in, no complaints. But is there, is there a way that they can prove their point and be able to recuperate and recover in a more reasonable time frame. I think that's another piece of the conversation that, that perhaps needs to be started based on what we saw the, over the weekend.